In this video, I'm gonna show you how I got to my first $10,000 trading, but more importantly, how I would do it again if I had to start from scratch knowing what I know now. Okay, because making money with a small account at first can be tricky, but it's probably actually faster and easier than you think, but only if you've already been through it and you actually know how to do it. All right, and I'm not just saying this, we have real traders taking these exact things that I'm about to show you right now and being able to scale and grow accounts like crazy. So first, I'm gonna share with you exactly how I got to my first $10,000 trading. Then I'm gonna walk you through a framework that I wish I followed in the beginning, including habits to have, books to read, and simple processes that you can take to be able to take a small amount of money and get up to your first $10,000 trading. So let's first go over the story of how I got to my first $10,000 trading. So when I was about 19 years old, I decided I was going to go to engineering college, but first I was going to go into the military. So I did about a year of training in the army. And before I was about to go to college, I had about six months worth of time where I had saved some money up from the military. I had about $6,000 to my name and I decided it was going to be a good idea to put that money to work and learn how to invest. So I did some simple research online and figured out that you can buy companies before they get bought out by other companies. And usually that means that the price of the company will increase. So I decided it was smart to put my entire investment into a company called Cleveland Cliffs Natural Resources. I'll never forget the name of this company. I woke up the next morning and Cleveland Cliffs has doubled in price and I turned 6,000 into about 13 to 14 thousand dollars. This is where I realized that if I can figure out this process where I'm looking at other people making four to five thousand dollars working the entire month, if I got good enough at this, I could make double of that in two days while I'm sleeping just by understanding certain things about the market. And this is where the flame ignited in my mind where I knew I wanted to focus on growing an account and getting into trading. But of course, when things start to sound too good to be true, they oftentimes are. I ended up going to college for engineering, but I couldn't help myself by just focusing on the day trading when I was in lectures. I was finding repeatable patterns in the market, and I knew that if I focused enough energy on that, I could be able to make that $8,000, and I was sort of chasing that initial feeling. And in this point in time, my system was very, very primitive, and the way I was trying to grow accounts was by me trying to hail Mary and go for big, big wins, putting basically my entire account at risk every time I would take a trade. It only took one day of me being stupid, thinking that I could beat the process, race the process of trying to grow my account. And I'll never forget the stock CNET and I was shorting into this candle, meaning that I was trying to get the price to move down so that I could make profit. And this just decided on a single day to rip by like 300% in one candle. And just like that, I lost my entire account balance of basically almost $20,000. Now there's a lesson in this. First lesson is you're not gonna beat the system by taking big risks when you don't know what you're doing when you're first getting started. This is not the way to go about things. So after that point, I sat and I was like, I'm never going to risk that much per trade. This is where I really need to dial in and figure out how to not let this happen again and actually try to grow my account properly. All right. And this is going to take us into step one, which is the foundation. The first thing people want to do when they're trying to race to that $10,000 mark, or even just growing any trading account is let's get on an exchange. Let's get on a broker and start putting funds into the broker, which is the exact opposite of what you should be doing. The harsh reality is it's a lot easier to make money once you already have money. If you're making 10% a month on a system and you have $50,000 to trade with, you can quite comfortably make that 10%. Quite frankly, in our community with what we're working on right now, we're making 10% quite easily, basically per day on these trades. So making that 10% a month, making $5,000 in a month is a lot easier than taking $50, $100 account and trying to go with crazy risk to try to make a lot of money off of those accounts. Okay, the harsh reality of this game is while you're learning the market while you're being a student of the market, you should be working other jobs trying to pull money in. I was bartending and waitering from about four o'clock in the afternoon to about 1 a.m. waking up at eight, trading the market until I went back to work. And I did that for probably about three years. Okay. While I was doing this process, there are some books that I want to recommend that I think are very, very helpful. And this is going to be different than the learning you're going to get online. Obviously, I want you to go watch my other videos. I put a lot of work into trying to educate and put this information out for you guys to be able to benefit in your trading journey. But there's something to be said about reading a book, especially older books on trading, rather than finding all the new information that's out on the internet regarding trading. Okay, There's something about the simplicity in the, the old style of thinking that if you can tune up and apply to the modern thoughts of trading actually are very, very impactful. It's a lot less noise and it's a lot more about truly what the markets are. So first book that I can recommend to you 
is trading in the zone by Mark Douglas. I consider this to be the trading Bible. Okay, this is going to tell you exactly how to think. It's basically just you getting added the entire time you're reading the book. So <laughs> you're just going to be like, damn, I do do that. And then he says this and you're like, oh yeah, everything I'm doing is wrong. But by the time you finish it, you feel like you're enlightened. And then when someone says something to you about trading, you're like, nope, we don't do that. We don't do that. You're like zened out. You feel like you're like completely enlightened with trading. So trading in the zone, definitely read that book. New Trader 101 by Stephen Burns. Shout out Stephen Burns. He has a lot of really amazing books, including Moving Averages 101 as well, which is also an amazing book. They're short reads. They're very easy. It's going to get those fundamentals buried into your brain. This is a little bit more advanced, maybe a little bit later in your trading education, but it's called Fibonacci Applications and Strategies for Traders. This is written by, I think, Stephen Fisher, but these are really, really fundamental ways of trading price action. Before we were even really using computers and people were plotting prices out on graphs to do technical analysis. It's pretty cool to sort of go in that depth when you're discussing your trading. All right, so accumulating capital and being a student of the game is one of the biggest things that I wish that I did differently instead of having all of these lessons be really, really expensive. Okay, step two is going to be strategy and proof of concept. Okay, it makes no sense to be putting your money into the market if you don't know that the trading system that you're trading is going to generate a profitable result for you over time. The number one essential thing that is going to help you is going to be practice your trading strategy in journal. In the description, if you go over to our free discord and you go to this resources and learning section here, you're going to get access to the entire suite of everything I talk about in this video. You can download them. You can start using them on your trading journey. You can find that in this link right here. But here I'm able to play out my strategy and track the progress over time so I can see how many wins I have, how many losses I have, how many total trades I've taken and what my profit profit is for that week, for that month, or for the duration that you're practicing so that you know when you go to put real money behind it, you know your system works. And if you're looking to get your toes wet and you're not really sure what system to use, we've been working on developing crazy, crazy successful systems. I don't think anyone else is doing this in the retail trading space right now. But if you want to get your toes wet and you want to see what we're doing, you can go over here. Once again, this is completely free for you to try. They say the proof's in the pudding, right? This is us putting that proof out there. These are our trade ideas. But we do have trade updates here where you can go ahead and click on this, open up a thread and you can follow along with some of the trades that we're taking. And I have a ton of other videos where I'm going over trading strategies that we're using on a weekly basis. I'm going to put that in a card at the end of this video so that you can finish this video and then get into the systems to apply all this good stuff into things to practice your trading. And that brings me to the second tip in step two is when you're starting off, work on mastering one system. Focus on something simple and repeatable that you can master so you can figure out your process, whether or not it's profitable, and then practice, practice, practice practice, practice. The way you can do that is by using a software called TradingView. That's what I'm using right now. All right. If you want to use TradingView, I will put a link in the description of the video. This allows me to click on this and bring my playhead essentially back as far as I want on the chart. So this was a trade that I took the other day. I entered the market here wanting the price to go down after seeing the price come up to this level and hit off of these resistance zones. And I was able to take profit down in this region. Okay. And I was able to make a nice profit on this trade. But if I wanted to go back and practice me actually taking these trades, I can go ahead and bring the price back and then trade the price forward so that I know when I'm implementing this and I want to go try it in the real markets, I have the proof of concept that my system does work. And after I nearly lost all of my money on CNET and I put those three to four years of repetitions in, okay, this aligned really nicely with when cryptocurrency really started to make a significant move. And when I would find significant momentum in the market, I would wait for the price to round the corner and break out of these highs. In the beginning of this journey, I was risking $500, $1,000 on some of these trades that would follow through and give me a reward of several thousand dollars to the point where I actually worked my way up to not only 10,000, but 25 $5,000 before crypto really, really started to take off. Okay, I'm not going to go too deeply into that. But the point is, once I had that proof of concept, I was able to put it to use with conviction. And that's where my trading really started to make a change, All right, which brings us to step three, which is initial capital. All right, you don't want to do what I did in the beginning, where you're starting with so much money when you don't know what you're doing. We actually have a process now where we, like I said earlier, have people starting with even $100 accounts and being able to six, seven X that in a couple months, which is incredible growth if you understand trading. Okay, because say we wanted to buy Ethereum here and we wanted to sell it there and we wanted to sell for a contained loss here. And say we want to risk 
$25. Now, considering the move is substantially smaller, you can see now we need 3.29 coins at $2,200, which is going to cost us almost $10,000 worth of position. Now, we can use leverage on a lot of exchanges. So for example, to trade cryptocurrencies, I trade on Bybit and Bybit allows us to use up to 100x leverage on certain coins, which means that we can have access to 100x the size of capital that we put into our account. So if we put, say, $100 into account, we can use up to $10,000. The problem is you still have to pay fees when you're taking these trades. So say, for example, we have 3.2 times 2,000, so call it seven or $8,000. We're gonna pay on the total value of the leverage position, which if you have a small amount of capital is going to really, really eat into your profits. So it's better to trade on larger timeframes at first, and then as you have more capital and you can handle the fees and you have more experience, you can work your way down on the smaller timeframes. Because as you get more sucked into this world and you become more proficient at this, we can take two to three trades on a daily basis pretty routinely. So I'm not trying to discourage anyone from going on the smaller time frame, but when we're scaling up these accounts, you wanna stay a little bit bigger and then work your way down to the day trading as you scale. Which brings me to step number four of scaling up to that $10,000 is picking your risk style. So there's two major risk styles that you can pick from when you're starting off. I'm gonna talk about the one that I like, and then I'm gonna talk about another commonly used one. Depending on the system, I'll bounce back and forth. The first is going to be a fixed dollar amount risk. So a perfect example of that is this Ethereum example here. I want to buy at this zone, sell here if I'm wrong, and sell here if I'm right, which will make me roughly 3x what I'm risking on the trade. So if I'm risking $25, that's going to make me $75 if I'm right. By working off of these fixed dollar amounts, as I add funds to the account, I'm not increasing the balance of the account. I'm just using that as a benefit. Benchmark. Oftentimes what you can do is every time you double the account, you can then go ahead and double your dollar risk. So say you start off with a $200 account, you risk $25, you hit a few profitable trades. Now you're at $400 account. You can move this risk up to $50 and so on. The reason I use a fixed dollar risk per trade is because it's easier for me in the heat of the moment when numbers are flying around and things are moving quickly for me to decide, okay, I'm risking $1,000 on this position, right? I don't need to be doing calculations to figure out the other strategy, which is a percent risk on your account. So for a fixed percent risk per trade, let's take the same exact example. Say we're starting with $200 in our account. We're risking $25, which is a 12.5% risk. Say we make $75 on the profit. So now we have $275 in the account. We're then going to take 12.5% of this new increased total, which is going to slowly and gradually increase the amount of risk per trade as our account grows. Once again, this system is good, but it is more thinking in more small numbers over time, and you can pick between whichever one suits you better. All right, and step number five is the biggest thing that I wish I knew when I started off growing my accounts, which is something that I'm personally coining as progressive rebalancing. And what I mean by this is first figuring out your proof of concept, but starting off with increased risk as your account is very small. And as you progress to your target account size value, that per trade risk gradually drops. So if you have a very small account, say you're starting with $100 and you know by using your trade journal that you only lose one out of every 12 trades, which might sound crazy to you, but I'm gonna explain how that works in just a second and show you that we're actually doing it. If you know on average you can make 12 wins in a row, okay, risking half of your account or 25% of your account, a larger amount of your account as you're in that small phase where if the entire account got wiped out, you wouldn't be that upset is smart because it's going to get you to your next step, which is the medium phase, which is where you can then drop your risk accordingly. Okay, this is where you can drop your risk some, from say down to maybe 10 to 25%, right? So you still have a little bit more more risk on the table, but you're starting to slow down that aggression and trying to go into something called capital preservation mode. This is something that I use in the investing side of things as well. And then phase three, as you're growing that account, you're slowly, once again, backing off your per risk trade down to say something like five or 10%. Then you go down to three to 5%. Then as you're fully scaled up to that account size that you're looking for, like we talked about earlier in the video, that 10% of say $50,000, now you're able to make $5,000 thousand dollars a month very comfortably without taking significant amounts of risk by going through the process of learning, having the proof of concept, and then using your progressive rebalancing to scale your account 
to make an income generating machine for yourself. And before everyone's in the comment section attacking me, I wanna show you what we're actually doing in our Discord community. These are real people in real instances of what we're doing. I also have a video coming out. I'm not sure when this one's going to drop, but it might be out. It's where I document my entire week of trading right in front of you. I'm literally trying to change the retail trading space to show you how to actually grow accounts and actually trade rather than just making BS videos about candlestick scalping where I'm not actually doing any scalping at all and I'm just making videos for the sake of making videos. I'm trying to show you exactly how to actually grow accounts. We can see here recently opened up a $500 trading account just for TCL Max, which is one of the systems that we're working on on our team right now. A week and a half ago, I'm now at $3,000 on my account and growing. Once again, I'm not making this up. These are things that I wish I knew in the beginning because now I don't have to go out and risk $15,000 being stupid on Chinese you know, biotech stocks, right? I can actually follow a regimented system that's very aggressive with a small account and be able to scale accounts. Let's go over to Connor. Massive shout out to the Nevitrade team. In just 10 short days, seven trading days, I've officially doubled my trading account thanks to the TCL Max system. Once again, logging all his trades and look at the percentage that he's making per trade. These are real instances of us being able to use this framework and scale this properly to be able to make that income generating machine for yourself. I'm just genuinely showing you what's going on. All right, we can see once again, McLeap, my first profit over $100 with the help of CH1. Fibs, thank you, Craigie, for all of your knowledge. Really, really beautiful trade. Following once again, the CH1, which was one of the systems that I was using very early on in my career to be able to make crazy gains and get my first account scaled up to that $25,000. Dollar mark. All right, we have Hans just 2x my account in two days. Is this some sort of record for the TCL Max? As you can see all of his wins back to back 9%, 6%, 10%, 10%, 14%. 10 but just to reinforce, these are people who have followed this framework that I'm explaining to you and are using proper day trading systems to be able to grow accounts. We're on a mission to try to become one of the best trading communities online. Maybe not the most popular, but one of the best trading communities. So I figured I would share some of this knowledge I've learned over my years of trading with you so you can get started the right way. Okay, if you're still here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like trading and investing. All right, if you liked this, put in the comment below and let me know what your favorite part of this video was. When you like and comment, it shows me that you're enjoying the content that I'm giving that's providing value to you guys. And honestly, it makes me motivated to make more content for you guys. So also let me know what you want to see more of. But until next time, guys, I will see you all in the next video.